God is the best explanation of intentional states of consciousness in the world. Philosophers are puzzled by states of intentionality. Intentionality is the property of being about something or of something. It signifies the object directedness of our thoughts. For example, I can think about my summer vacation or I can think of my wife. No physical object has this sort of intentionality. A chair or a stone or a glob of tissue like the brain is not about or of something else. Only mental states or states of consciousness are about other things. As a materialist, Dr. Rosenberg recognizes this fact and so concludes that on atheism, there really are no intentional states. Dr. Rosenberg boldly claims that we never really think about anything. But this seems incredible. Obviously, I am thinking about Dr. Rosenberg's argument. This seems to me to be a reductio ad absurdum of atheism. By contrast, on theism, because God is a mind, it's hardly surprising that there should be finite minds. Thus, intentional states fit comfortably into a theistic worldview. So, we may argue, one, if God did not exist, intentional states of consciousness would not exist. Two, but intentional states of consciousness do exist. Three, therefore, God exists. The problem of intentionality is a really hard problem to understand in philosophy. Uh, Dr. Craig mentioned a couple of times that it's the intentionality is the fact that our thoughts appear to be about stuff. Like, I'm thinking about Craig now, and I'm thinking about the timer that says I got eight and a half minutes to finish my rebuttal. I'm thinking about stuff. How is that possible? How is it possible for one chunk of matter, my brain, to be about, intrinsically about, another chunk of matter? Dr. Craig or the sign that now says eight minutes. That is a profound mystery in philosophy with which philosophers have been trying to wrestle certainly since Descartes, and I think since Plato made the point in the Mino, one of his other dialogues. How is it possible for one chunk of matter, the brain, to be intrinsically about, directed at, pointing at another chunk of matter? Now, you may think that's not a problem, that's not very difficult, but if you start reading Descartes, and you read Leibniz, and you read the philosophers in the tradition of Western philosophy, you'll see that it's a huge problem, okay? And, uh, it's a problem for science, for neuroscience, okay? How is it that the wet stuff in the brain can do this, okay? There are two answers to this question. One is Descartes' answer of dualism. There is a mind and it's independent of the brain. It's a to totally different spiritual substance. Theists love this argument for obvious reasons. If there's a spiritual substance in us, a soul, a person, a self, independent of our brain, well, then, of course, if it's not physical, it's indestructible and it's well on its way to immortality, which is just what the Christian religion wants us to believe, okay? That's dualism, okay? Most scientists aren't dualists. There's the odd exception, you know, Eccles and even some philosophers like Descartes or Popper, but most scientists, most neuroscientists think that cognition is a brain process, okay? And the problem is to explain how the brain process, one chunk of matter, can have this property of aboutness. And that question has nothing to do, nothing interesting to do with atheism or theism. Intentional states of consciousness. Dr. Rosenberg says, how can one chunk of matter be about another one? I agree with him on this. It can't. That leads him to deny that we ever think about anything. It leads me rather to say, but I do think about things. Therefore, there must be minds and minds fit nicely into a theistic worldview because God is the ultimate mind, and so the presence of finite minds in this world is nothing mysterious. It fits into a theistic world in a way that it doesn't fit into an atheistic world. 